Yeah. As I said, I'm, the curiosity is, is always that when we from the outside see black Americans, we think about, oh, they all want to get into sports, you know, football, basketball, baseball, because you guys have everything. Um, yeah. Was that on the side singing was just more you're like, no, I, I don't really care about the sports. I want to be a singer for yourself growing up. Yeah. Um, I loved basketball. But, you know, in the way that you're expressing it, and I do understand it, I was in a household where it was freedom to figure it out yourself. No one pushed me into sports. No one pushed me into music. Uh, I was heavily into martial arts. Wow. Um, but I used to say, you know, if I wasn't a professional entertainer, I probably would have gone to law school or I might have become a professional basketball player. And seeing as I'm 6'1", I probably would have been a shooting guard. <laughs> <laughs> a little yeah, bit taller so than Moxie Boats. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't, I didn't have a, you know, I didn't, I didn't have that sort of typical influence of going in some sort of direction, being pushed that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess when you go into a place like the Kappa, I've heard from Quest Love and 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 everyone. Is it does it become a place where is was that your Philadelphia version of fame? Absolutely, <laughs> hands down, absolutely. I mean, it was just, it was, it was so, uh, you know, no pun intended. It, it really is where I became a man from boy to a man. You know, in terms of confidence. Yeah. Uh, because when I was, you know, I started in ninth grade, I was shy, 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 you know, but I knew there's this little person inside of me. It's like, I want to get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and um, watching the, the ones before me, 10th, 11th, 12th graders singing in the hallways and after school on the subway and buses and in McDonald's and stuff, I was like, yes, I got to do this. I want to do this, you know? Yeah. So I went through the, you know, the trenches and as a senior, I, then I was that guy, you know? Who, yeah, it was, a, it was a great place to develop yourself creatively. But uh, I would say more importantly, um, you know, finding who you are, you know, yeah. in your own creative space. Yeah. You know, that's cool. definitely, it did it for me and a lot of us, you know. At those times, did you have an idea? Because I think if you, when, when you're in your 11th grade, are you, is, is this the back end of the 80s or the early 90s or when? Yeah, so I, I graduated in 89. Okay, so 89. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking about the music scene then. We had Guy with the whole New Jack Swing. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe oh, yeah. Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown. You had uh, you had any heartbreak um, would have been a massive influence. Yeah, massive. Eight, 1980, massive. Absolutely. Yeah. Then we had the old, Keith, absolutely. Yeah, Keith Sweat would make last forever album and stuff. Absolutely, all of that. Yeah, absolutely. So then, what are you thinking? Are you thinking Keith Sweat, Bobby Brown solo? Are you thinking? A group like New Edition, Guy, Troop, what, what, what was then? What, what... Well, yeah, well, well, I mean, you know, I don't know, you know, the history, but I was always thinking group because, you know, um, I co-founded Boys to Men. So it was just a matter of me wanting to to do the group thing because uh, it's funny, like a lot of people ask me, but I never really desired to be a solo artist. Wow. Um a, because I love harmonies too much. Because at that time, also, um, take six. Ah, uh, yeah. Come. Bang. Take six. And they were a key component to uh, me and Nate developing the harmony tightness uh, of boys to men. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um so a lot of guests that I talk to, they um, they talk about take six or commission being, especially if you're in a group, being the influence of like, okay. Um, and I remember interviewing Claude about how much they've influenced so many other people. Um, but for you, what was it about, say, 
take six that you just thought, wow. Well, the intricacies of their of their harmonies. Mm. Um, uh, Mervyn Warren, um, one of the the creators of Take Six. Yeah, who, uh, I had you know I had a true honor and privilege to work with. He's the one that made my group as yet sound incredible mm -hmm. harmonically. You know because he came in and produced our vocals alongside with uh, Babyface. Mm. Um, and so take six is just how do you how do you sound like a record with literally no music at all, maybe mm. some finger snaps or something like that, and to find a six part harmony, you know it, it's it it was it was fascinating to be able to hear that, and you know having um, the love and passion for music and and harmonizing, um, you know me me and the guys we would just dissect every note listening and obviously it was what cassette tapes like what's in your background right <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, yeah. rewind it over and over again rewind listen rewind listen rewind listen just constantly developing um being able to harmonize yeah so take six was definitely integral in developing that for me so uh, and i guess for those of us who who might say who might say oh because I remember I, I, I just this evening I put a post that says, okay, I'm going to interview Mark, and you're formerly your Boys to Men, as yet, solo yeah. singer, sorry. And people yeah. say, Boys to Men. And, yeah. I, and I guess, you know, I guess people will be wondering, you said co founded. How, how did, so I know you're all, you're all in the same school, but who's I, how did the idea come about? Let's come up with a group and, 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 and see where, we, where it goes. Well, so um, I'll give you some tidbits. I'm going to give you some tidbits. I have to put out there. I'm writing a book. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. To, you know, the whole, my whole journey. But uh, me and Nathan Marks, um, we started out in creative performing arts high school in ninth grade. That's where we met. Same, same yeah. year. Same year. Same year. Literally, yeah, okay. We graduated the same year. And, uh, you know, it was because of our love for new edition that, mm -hmm we we became really really tight you know we were in the same homeroom and so we were sitting there he was sitting right across from me and uh getting to meet each other we uh, we immediately clicked because we love new edition mm -hmm. we also love this song called tender love um by force mds I think. yeah 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 jimmy jam yeah yeah yeah. Tender. yeah 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 um so and that really sealed a, a bond between us. Um, so for like the next three years, you know, Thick of Steve's and um, Wanye comes in um, when we're seniors. Sean comes in, meaning comes to the school. Okay. Uh, uh, a year, a year after us, I believe. I can't remember. <laughs> so, so no, so and uh, and um, and Michael McCary, uh, because my parents moved to Los Angeles and I didn't want to go, I stayed and lived with Michael. Wow. Yeah. So him and I went to school together uh, our senior year, back and forth, you know, from home to school, his home into school, and that, that was the year uh, nineteen. Uh, 88 is when me and Nate um, developed Boys to Men. Um, and uh, and, it, and funny enough, just by chance that Michael, you know, and I lived together, uh, <laughs> you know, it, would, it was just like he stayed with me while I was rehearsing. Okay. And then his, his bass, it just chimed in. We're like, damn. You know? <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So then, uh, so he entered the group, and uh, and then I'll I'll save the rest for. Yeah, but I, I guess the, the 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 one thing was then was it initially then always going to be five piece like New Edition? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I've said in in in, in various interviews, you know, you say tragedy strikes. Uh, a lot of people thought I left the group. Uh, some people would think the group kicked me out. It was none of those things. It was uh, something, obviously, it was very devastating. Uh, I will put out there, you know, it was 
the worst time of my life. Uh, you're talking about hard, like to deal with not being able to continue on, you know, with my guys to see all the success uh, that they had. I, there's no question it was the the worst thing that could ever happen to an 18 year old kid to top that off. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you love what you watched, there's over 100 artists that we've interviewed. So please check out the videos. Remember to like, share, and not unsubscribe. But better still, become a member of Halftime Chat and get exclusive videos ahead of time. But thanks for watching. Take care.